Ringwalk Danny live in London here at the O2 Arena. We are in the American Express Lounge thanks to Stagefront VIP and we're joined here with Mr. Maxi Hughes, the IBO lightweight champion of the world. Maxi, first and foremost, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and to be on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, obviously, got some things in store for you coming off the Kid Galahad win and that's seven in a row for you. Uh, rumors on the street has it that the former unified champion of the world, George Cambosos, is next for you. Uh, what can you tell us? Yeah, so, you know, it, it's out there now. I think I think the boxing, uh, the boxing world's seeing it. Um, you know, the rumors are true. Me and... Me and George have signed, we've agreed to fight and it's just it's just now a matter of waiting for a date and a venue. We've we've been told June. Um, so you know we're we're both we're both training now, we're both obviously preparing to fight each other. It's just a matter now of getting that, that date and that venue and I think at minute a country as well, you know, there's talks of it being Australia or the US. I personally don't mind, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to travel away and travel the world for business. Um, so e either location, I, I'll be happy with. Now, the U.S. kind of threw me a, a, a little bit off, but obviously we saw the big events that the Australian government uh, put on for George uh, in his home country against Devon, two events last year. Uh, given that the U.K. really isn't an option, could you could you see yourself and George being a huge event down down under down in Australia? I mean, I think so. Like George, you know, boxing worldwide is a big name. You know, former um, unified champion. You know, he had a great great big win against Tiafimo in Teo's back garden. Um, you know, and he's he's got a great following, um, as he says. You know, it, the the both both events he fought Devin Haney. Were both big crowds, so you know he would have thought he's he spent up until challenging for the world titles, he had um, you know a lot of years on the road, so to speak. So you know I think he's happy he's happy to be fighting at home. Um, do we need to pause for this? So um, yeah, so he's, he's had a lot of years on the road, so I think he's happy he's happy to be fighting at home and. And I think his, his home fans, his, his diehard supporters, want to, want to see him at home. So, yeah, maybe. I know it's, it's the other side of the world to us, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's, that's doable over there. So you have no preference, Australia or the US? So for you, it doesn't matter, or do you think it'd be bigger in Australia? I think, well, I think there'd be more eyes on it if it was in the US, obviously that's all the big fights, you know, that is the mecca of boxing, that all the big fights are in America. Um, but personally to me, it's, it doesn't matter, the ring the ring is a, a boxing ring is a boxing ring, it's, you know, it's, it's all gonna be there and it's gonna be the same outcome. Now, um, the outcome for you obviously is victory by any means, you are defending that IBO title and this is an IBF eliminator as well. Obviously Devin Haney still undefeated, will he stay at lightweight, will he not? I guess we'll uh, have to wait and see, but um, how do you think he does against Lomachenko that is scheduled May the 20th? Um, he is currently the, the undisputed champ, so how do you see that fight against the Matrix play out? I uh, personally feel like he'll he'll beat Lomachenko. I think he's really I think he's he showed me a lot in his two fights with George how disciplined just you know, especially in the first fight, he basically just used the jab. He out jabbed George and you know, stayed out of trouble, stayed out of the way. Um, and I think they're seeing Devon and Loma side by side. I think the size difference will be a big factor in that. I think um Devin, obviously, the younger man. And, and let's not forget, Loma has just been through a war as well. You know, he's been fighting, defending his country. Um, maybe that could be a, a motivational tool for him to, you know, I think I'm fighting for my country here. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to carry this this venom that he's carrying, this, this anger, into the ring. Um, obviously, he's getting a little bit older. 
has Loma still got them tricks? Can he do it against a young, younger, bigger Devin Haney? Let me ask you because obviously uh, we were just talking a little bit off camera. Some people wonder how does he make the weight? You know, he is a, he is a, a big lightweight. Um, you know, I'm being told and being around him that if he stays, it obviously would have to be for somebody big, so, uh, Gervonta, uh, uh, Shakur Stevenson fight. That being said, said, it looks like the belts might scatter regardless. Once he moves up, the belts will be vacated and fought for. Um, do you think by the time that happens, Maxi Hughes will be in position to fight for that vacant title, should that be the case? Yeah, obviously, Devin and Loma fighting 20th of May. Me and Georgia looking like we're going to be scheduled for June. So ours is going to be an eliminator. And obviously, there's also Gustavo Limos, who's the number one contender as well. Um, so I know the belts have been tied up for quite a while now, haven't they? Um, Loma, I believe, is a WBO mandatory, is he? Um, but also the other sanctioning bodies are going to start ordering man whether whether Devin stays at the weight or not, I think because of the belts, nobody stays undisputed for, for that long because the sanctioning bodies need to start ordering managers because I, I suppose it's not fair to the rest of the division who's sort of waiting, everybody's waiting for them opportunities for the belts. So, like I say, it, it may stay at lightweight for the big names, for Shakur or Tank, or the winner of Tank Garcia. Um, but it might, it might not be. Able well, to be. well, well. Hold on, hold on. You said tank, so, so. Let's, you know, I gotta ask. Uh, obviously, I'm not saying you're overlooking Ryan in that fight, but you did say tank. How do you see that fight play out? April 22nd. It's a big one in Vegas. Yeah, very, very good fight and good for boxing, may I add. Um, but my, my prediction is a tank win, and I'll explain why. Tank can start pretty slow, and he, he does a bit of what Lamanchenko does. He measures his opponent. He doesn't give too much away, like with Roley. He, you know, he, he let Roley start working, let him jab, make it looking like he was being outworked. But he, he's thinking, he's thinking, he's measuring, and and I think that may happen with Ryan. Ryan's taller, got them very fast hands, um, and I think maybe early Ryan will start getting his jab off, getting his his long shots off, and he could well go ahead on the scorecards. I think the moment he makes a mistake, he sometimes can leave his chin up in the air or come over the front foot with his chin. And I think the moment he does that, Tank can punish him. And then we've seen the kind of power that Tank's got. It's a one punch, lights out. Um, and if Ryan does make one mistake, um, which I believe it will be late on if he does, I think I, think I, I predict a, a Tank stoppage between round six to 12. But at the time of the stoppage, I, I would say Ryan will probably be ahead on the scorecards. Mm. Uh, you know, for quite some time, your name has uh, flirted around with uh, many others. There was talks of potentially you and Devin at some point. There was talks of you and Ryan at some point. Do you think that this George Cambosos fight is a fight that... Uh, is overdue for Maxi Hughes in a fight that you're well deserving of, given how many times you were so close to that big one. Yeah, so it's they're almost, you know, when when the when the Garcia fight fell through, I, I was I was gutted, really devastated. You know, I've been longing for that big fight, like you say, it were 2020, 2021 when I was mentioned. You know, a little bit in talks. My name was mentioned um, possibly to fight Devon. Um, but Jojo Diaz got it instead. Um, you know, and then last year, twice, nearly three times, negotiating with Golden Boy and Matchroom to fight Ryan. And then, you know, both times they fell through. So, you know, so close, but yet, you know, it fell through. So, like you say, now we've got the, we've got the, well, we've, we've, this is the furthest we've been into a big fight with. Me and George have signed the contract. We're ready to fight each other. Um, it's just a matter of the promoter getting the date, and getting the venue, and, and getting it on. So yeah, now that this fight's here, I think it's long overdue, and you know I'm more than ready for it. Now, 
you both have been out of the ring for for a little bit. Your last fight was September. His was October. Difference is, Maxi, you've been winning, champ. You on a seven fight win streak. George is coming off two losses. Obviously, uh, and respect of, uh, respectfully, he has fought uh, at the higher level in, in in those two losses, and even in the fight before taking on the unified champion at the time in Teofimo Lopez. That said, though. What do you think is the biggest threat that George brings into this fight, despite those two losses? Um, no, I, I know what George's strengths are. Um, he's obviously, like you say, he has boxed at an higher level. I can hold my hands up to that. He's been unified champion. I haven't. Um, but at the same time, George has climbed that mountain. I'm still coming up that mountain. He's coming down the mountain. So, you know, that's going to be interesting. I know what George's strengths are, you know, with... I've been a Cambosos fan, you know, I've watched his journey to winning them belts, so, you know, I'm, I am a Cambosos fan, you know, I, I've, I've enjoyed watching him, um, and it'll be a pleasure to share a ring with him, but I know his strengths, I know what I need to do, um, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm very confident in my own ability. Uh, I know the boxing world, the critics, won't give me much of a chance, but like you say, I've been written off in quite a lot of them last seven fights and I just keep proving people wrong and I enjoy proving people wrong. So come June, Maxi Hughes, George Cambosis, how does Maxi get the job done and leave that ring with that IBO strap and his hand raised? Just I, like I've said in my, my previous fights, you know, when they say it'll just be a Maxi Hughes win. No, however, however that comes, by any means necessary, I will just make sure that I get the job done and, and keep climbing that mountain. You know, I can see it. I'm, I've got laser focus. I'm climbing that mountain. And I'm going strong. Well, Max, you were definitely excited. I want your thoughts on a couple upcoming fights. John Ryder uh, making the trip across the pond and making the trip to Mexico to take on... You know, arguably the face of the sport, the face of boxing and Canelo Alvarez. Um, it's going to be a tough task, especially in his uh, hometown return. Uh, first time in over 10 years Canelo's fought in Mexico. Uh, how do you see that fight play out? And uh, what does John Ryder need to do in order to beat Canelo? It's, it is a big ask for John, but, you know, I, I know John and I, I'm, I really, he deserves this fight. Again, he's been around the been around the game a long time he's worked very hard he's come back from defeats he's bounced back he's gritted his teeth you know, he's a real steely gritted guy um, and it, it's a big ask against Canelo like you say he's the face of boxing he's in his own town um, nothing's impossible you know he's not got the size of Bivol and maybe the boxing IQ of Bivol but you know he's, he's nicknamed the gorilla he's, he's got he's to gotta rough him up you know it's a big task but it can be done. I'm pretty sure it can be done. Do you think that they are overlooking him? Because you said he's not Bivol, yet Bivol is the talk. You know, uh, we've heard Eddie Hearn, we've heard Canelo. They want Bivol in September. They want the rematch. They want to avenge that loss. Do you believe that they are overlooking uh, John Ryder in a sense? There could be an element of that, yeah. I believe, you know, obviously Canelo... He's obviously an ultimate professional. He will prepare, and when he gets to the ring, physically he'll be prepared. But I don't know what his mindset's like, you know. Will he be mentally prepared, or will he have one eye on Bivol, or, you know, one of the other guys coming through? Obviously, um, David Benavitez, uh, big win, now manager for Canelo's belts. Has he got one eye on that? Um, that's all it could take. To let you know, to let this fight slip, you know, and obviously John Ryder is, we all know, it will be fully focused on going and doing a job on Canelo. Um, so yeah, only Canelo will know that when he goes to bed at night, is he thinking about John Ryder, or has he got one eye on Bivol, one eye on Benavides? Now let me ask you this, because obviously John Ryder can spoil the plans, regardless of what it is. That being said, we just saw Caleb playing in Benavidez. Benavidez came out victorious and is now the WBC mandatory and is uh, the interim champ. As a boxing fan, 
if Canelo gets past Ryder, would you rather see him go after Benavidez or would you rather see him try to avenge that loss against Bivol? Just as a boxing fan, what would Maxi Hughes prefer to see? I, I would personally prefer to see the, the Bivol. You know, it's, it's obviously going to be a, a Mexican rival, which always turn out to be fantastic and great to watch. I just feel like Bivol, especially at light heavyweight, has got Canelo's number. And if they fought again, I feel like we'll, we'll see another Bivol win with the, the boxing IQ that he's got. Um, you know, he's... Do you not see that with David? Do you, do you not believe that David has the IQ to beat uh, Canelo? Or? Yeah, I just think Canelo will have more of a chance with Benavidez because he's more willing to stand and, and really have a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight, whereas Bivol, very clever, very cute, and he's naturally bigger. I don't know if Canelo can hurt Bivol, with Bivol being the natural light heavy, naturally bigger, stronger. I don't know if he's going to be able to put a dint in him and be able to stop him controlling the distance with his feet and, and using his boxing IQ. I don't know if he's going to be able to be big and strong enough to do that. Now, now, last thing I want to touch on, obviously we've spoke on the possibility of Devin moving up and those belts being vacated regardless. There's a lot of names, obviously, in the division right now. You and George are stepping into the ring in June. We see Shakur, he'll be into the ring next weekend, as will Keyshawn Davis, the uh, silver medalist who's been making a lot of noise and quickly moving up those rankings. Who do you see your big fight uh, be with down the line uh, since Devin seems unlikely with him uh, possibly being done at the end of this year at the division? Um, if if Devin vacates with coming through George, the, the position I'll be in with the IBF is number two. So if the belt's vacant, I would presume that the IBF will order number one to fight number two for the vacant belt, which would be against... Gustavo Limos, the Argentinian undefeated, looks very strong, come forward, aggressive, uh, decent knockout percentage. Um, so that's what I, I would see. Um, if Devon doesn't vacate, I I'm not sure what will happen in terms of mandatories being ordered or, or whether the IBF will order me v Limos in a final eliminator to create one mandatory. Um, not sure how it'll work, but yeah, I, I, I would imagine probably at the end of the year to fight Gustavo Lemos. With all the names there, would could you see yourself coming to, to, to Vegas, coming to New York to face one of those young American names? Is that something, like you said, America's the mecca of boxing, is that something Maxi Hughes plans to do? I'd love to, yeah, absolutely, you know. I am I am in the back end of my career, you know, I don't want to, I owe it to my family, my wife and my kids not to go on too long, you know, we've got lots of stuff that we want to do as a family and stuff, um, so yeah, I'd love to tick that box off, a big fight in America versus one of the big Americans, I want to tick that box off as a, as a goal um, in my career, that's what I would love to do, absolutely. Maxi Hughes, we appreciate it so much. Thank you for joining us. Message to the fans watching and uh, message to George himself. Just be ready, George, which I know he will. I know he like to read The Art of War, but I also read The Art of War, so the mind games, The Art of Deception won't work on me. Yo, he talked that deception shit, but that ain't really work on Devin, man. He talked, he, no, I'm, yo, he was so loud the first fight and the, and the second fight, he was quiet. And it's like he tried both, but at the end of the day, neither works for him in that situation. So looking forward to June and seeing both of you in the ring. Maxi Hughes, thank you so much, brother. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having me. What up, YouTube family? Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.